You cannot master the art of fly fishing without being proficient at fishing nymphs. These little bugs make up an important part in the diet of most trout. There are over 2,000 different types and sizes of nymph patterns, so the first thing to do is to figure out which patterns and sizes to use. One thing to consider for the size of a nymph is that many of those bugs are at their largest size during spring, just before they hatch into a flying insect. The flying insect then lays eggs in the stream and dies. The stream then becomes full of small baby nymphs. However, while most nymphs live on a one-year life cycle, there are some, such as stoneflies, that have a two-year life cycle. Also, not all nymphs hatch at the same time. Here are what I consider to be the essential nymphs I recommend a spin fisherman obtain. The copper john comes in a variety of colors and it would be difficult to say which is better. I've had the best luck using green, but other colors may work better in certain streams or certain times of year. While copper john is certainly good at catching fish on its own, it is also one of the heaviest nymphs out there. I therefore like to use it almost as a sinker to get my second nymph or wet fly down deep without having to attach an actual sinker to my line. For deep, turbulent water, I might go as large as a size 10, but for calmer or shallower conditions, a size 16 might suffice. Get the Prince Nymph in a bead head style. I would recommend a size 14 to start out with. The increased visibility provided by the white wings makes this a good pattern to be fished behind a slow sinking spoon. The gold ribbed hare's ear nymph is one of the most popular nymph patterns worldwide. Fish tend to readily take it. I recommend getting this in the bead head style. The pheasant tail nymph is another popular pattern. I've had good action fishing this in the size 18 during the fall. During the spring, a size 14 might work better. The red squirrel nymph in a size 10 is one of the better nymphs to use when giving some added motion to your nymphs such as when fishing behind a spoon or sinking crankbait, or even a small, slow-moving spinner. It also fishes well when drifted with the current. The pink squirrel is a nymph that was recently invented in southwest Wisconsin by John Bethke. You may have to look around a bit to find a place that will sell it to you, but it will be worth the effort. I predict in the future this nymph will gain much popularity. It is the most gaudy, high-visibility nymph made, and works very well with lures. I've caught trout on it from many different waters, and you will too if you use it. Midges may be small, but believe me, there are a lot of 20 inch trout that have been caught on a tiny number 20 midge. These types of bugs may be the most common food source in tail waters, still waters, or spring creeks. They are especially effective in cold water during winter and early spring. Start off with a size 18. As midges are very small, they must be fished slowly. There are two basic ways to fish a nymph. The most common method is to drift with the current below a floating crankbait. I always recommend using two different nymphs on your line. Let the heavier one come first. Try to get your nymphs to drift near the bottom of the stream. As discussed in the crankbait section, you can also fish nymphs effectively with a slow sinking crankbait. Another method is to fish nymphs behind a slow sinking spoon. This is often the best method in slow moving streams because it allows you to cover more water and the faster movement seems to trigger a feeding response from the fish. However, this method should only be used with larger nymphs that can be seen and identified by the trout when moving fast. Recommended nymphs for fishing behind a spoon include a number 10 red squirrel, a number 12 pink squirrel, and a number 12 beadhead prince nymph. Nymphs that I don't recommend fishing behind a spoon include copper johns, pheasant tails, or hare's ear in any size, they're just too thin. I've had good success fishing nymphs below a floating crankbait in high mountain lakes. In those situations, I always like to add a drop of crawfish oil to my nymph. Fuzzy nymphs, such as a hare's ear, tend to work best.